hello again. Uh, continuing, I think that this week, I don't know what uh, to call it. Um, so I sandwiched together the, the psalm and the weekly comfort and uh, figured we'll just do a psalm for our weekly comfort. Uh, and uh, it is a familiar psalm in, I, I guess in some ways, uh, maybe, maybe one of the real familiar hymns in uh, the, the history of the Lutheran Church is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And uh, maybe you don't know that Psalm 46 is the basis uh, for uh, that hymn that Luther wrote in, you know, 1530 something or whatever it was. Um, it actually was written um, by, by uh, it, well, sometime after King David and uh, around 1000 BC. Uh, so uh, we'll go back and we'll look at this and uh, tremendously comforting and uh, I found it really kind of a neat psalm. I haven't studied it like this uh, in, in many, many years, if at all. Uh, so to go back and look at it, I, I appreciate it and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll appreciate it as well. Um, a couple of thoughts before we jump in uh, to Psalm 46. Uh, it, it really is a psalm that, that can cover a multitude of things. Um, Troubles, hardships, uh, wars uh, that, that we have, uh, the, the things that attack uh, the Christian faith, the Word of God, the things that uh, are threats to existence uh, and, and the reality of uh, faith, uh, these types of things, they, they do come. They will always come. Uh, scriptures are playing on that. Where do we go uh, with them? What do we do with uh, uh, these situations in life? And a nice song, a uh, good portion of uh, scripture to remind us uh, uh, of these things uh, and as it concerns our relationship with uh, God uh, how, how do we even know that he cares uh, you know that's one of the human fallacies uh, if you look at it and say God does, obviously doesn't care what's going on because things are so hard in my life I have so many troubles God doesn't care um, how can we be assured that God cares um, so that we know that in, in troubled times he will in fact help um, and I think the psalm covers uh, the, these things uh, pretty well as we look at it. Um, it might be valuable, at least the way that I'm looking at this, uh, to, to just remember the city of Jerusalem. Uh, the picture I've got here uh, would be what Jerusalem would be in, in Solomon's days. And I'm going to try and stand up here a little bit. Uh, does this work, Jim, if I do this? Um, this right here would have been in, in David's time what the city was. Um, he, he took that over and conquered it. Um, it was called the city of Jebus. Uh, the, the, the Jebusites uh, owned and operated it. Uh, and they, uh, David came and attacked it uh, in the land in his day. Uh, after he took it over, he moved it, uh, the, the, the capital city, to be there. Um, he actually, this is where the temple is. This is, would be where Solomon extended it uh, up to the north. Um, and the Temple Mount up here higher than, if you s would see this on another angle, you'd see that it slopes down and, and the Temple Mount is the highest, at least in this area um, uh, of this particular mount um, that is there. Um, but David, when he, when he took this over, uh, I, I kind of laughed uh, at the, uh, the, that story again because the people uh, inside the city uh, kind of were taunting and mocking David, saying, even our blind and our lame will defeat you. You know, the idea that this is this impenetrable fortress uh, on a hill, the Kidron Valley here, it, it actually realized that uh, the high ground is a lot easier to defend. Uh, so if, if nations attack, it's hard to climb up the hill, uh, especially with the walls that are around it, uh, to, to win a victory here. Um, and I had, I, just, I couldn't help but think of the Monty Python uh, the Holy Grail, the, the French uh, castle there taunting uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the English uh, little caravan of King Arthur uh, below, you know, your mother is a hamster and your dad, <laughs> your dad smells as of elderberries. Um, but that, that kind of was actually happening in David's time and David took it, uh, took the city uh, and uh, that became the capital city. Solomon extended it, built the temple up here um, and that would have been this high point there. Uh, and I think it's valuable as we go through the psalm to keep that picture in mind um, of the, the fortress city of Jerusalem uh, with God, the temple, uh, on, on the highest point, the, the, the central focus of uh, what the city was would have been the temple of Solomon. 
uh, for multiple reasons. Um, and it did the glorious architecture and everything else, the fact that it's up uh, on the top, but also the center of their life. And uh, he's the covenant God uh, who lives you know, in the temple there with his people. Um, and that, that, I think, is a good picture to hold as we jump into uh, Psalm 46. Uh, another heading here, and this is a, a psalm in a, in a series of headings that are similar. For the director of music, again, of the sons of Korah, uh, Korah was a son of Levi, remember Levi, where the priests um, seemed to be in charge of uh, the choirs or the music uh, of the temple, uh, of the liturgical worship that went on there, uh, according to Alamot, um, which would be, uh, we, we, of course we don't know, it seems maybe some kind of an instrumental setting, uh, whether the tuning of the instruments or whatever that might be, um, and, and a song. So. Uh, that's the heading that is there, and we'll dive into uh, the psalm. The first verse, I think, is really key uh, to uh, understanding the, the rest of the psalm. Um, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help uh, in trouble. Um, so God is our refuge, our shelter, maybe our fortress, um, and he's our strength. Uh, the, the idea of ever-present help and trouble, I think um, it, it might be better to think of it, at least in, in the way that I looked at it and studied it, it came across more as uh, if you did an investigation uh, about God and his activity, uh, you would see that he has well proved himself um, over the course of time to be help uh, in trouble. Now, you can certainly say it's ever-present help and trouble, but the picture behind it is more of an accounting and a calculation that you're doing uh, there uh, so that, that you could say um, he, he, he truly is uh, obviously a help in trouble. And uh, so that statement, God is a refuge, our, our refuge and our strength and ever-present help and trouble, you know, from the, from the Israelite, from the Jewish point of view as their um, singing about this and they're, and they're worshiping with these words, uh, they would be recounting their past and thinking of how well proved uh, God was as, as their shelter uh, in everything that happened uh, in their existence from the, the call out of uh, Egypt, um, it, even growing into a great nation under the circumstances that they did with uh, Pharaoh trying to kill the, the sons that were there and still God blessed them and prospered them. Um, in, in the middle of all of it, that, that through all of the things that happened, God had proved himself in their history um, to, to be their help, their fortress in times of trouble. Um, and, you know, that, that is the boom statement uh, that is there. And I think for all of us uh, in Scripture, too, it's a really a good thing. There's a reason why we study Bible history and why we study history. Um, you go back and what do you get example after example after example of exa after example of God doing just this, uh, of God being faithful to his promises, of God being uh, a fortress in times of uh, the worst troubles and circumstances for his people. Um, we go back and we can calculate that and we can go back and we can do that in our life. We can interview and talk to our parents and our grandparents about uh, God's role in their life and you, you, at the end of the day you say he's, he's just well proved, he's well proved himself. Uh, in troubles to be our God, our refuge, our strength uh, in, in every circumstance. Uh, and I think that's the statement that you carry uh, through, through the three verses, really, of this psalm. Therefore we will not fear, uh, though the earth give way and the mountains fall uh, into the heart of the sea. Um, you carry that initial statement, verse 1, God our refuge and strength, through, and you make an application there. Uh, we don't have to be afraid uh, when these things happen. Uh, when the earth gives way, uh, you might think of, a, of an earthquake uh, that is there, uh, the mountains falling into, uh, into the heart of the sea. Um, you know, th these are all realities in nature that you see around. I mean, earthquakes uh, are certainly there. Um, I, you, you watch video of, of sides of mountains that actually will, will crumble off and fall into a sea and actually cause a major typhoon. Um, uh, that way, even worse than an earthquake under the water, it's the, the worst kind of uh, water disaster I think you could probably look at. Um, but, but these things do happen in nature, and even when they do, we don't fear because God's our refuge, He's our strength. Uh, 
uh, and ever-present, uh, well-proved help in trouble. So even when these things are all happening, we still think <laughs> God is with us and we don't think about it. Um, I also look forward, you, you project yourself um, to, to uh, the end of time and this is this is a depiction of the last day too. I mean, uh, the mountains, we think of these, these things that are permanent structures. Um, they're always there and they won't always be there. They won't always be there. Uh, Jesus is going to come back and, and uh, destroy this uh, creation and we look at that and even then we don't have to, to fear. Uh, though its waters uh, roar and foam, returning again, picking up on the sea aspect of it, though its waters roar and foam and um, the idea of the sound of it as well as the, the violence of uh, the, that you can see there, the frothing of it. If you've ever been uh, to the ocean and, and you walk up to it, it's one of the things that, that stands out. I remember, you know, anytime you go to the ocean, you forget what it sounds like. It just sounds ferocious. Um, and uh, as the waves come and break in, you can see the violence of it. In fact, if you go out about waist deep, you can feel the tides trying to rip you back out to see it. It's a very powerful thing. Uh, so the idea that, that uh, in this verse really is, is that the mountains go into the sea, and this one is, is that the sea actually tears up the mountains. Um, so you have those two things being balanced, and, and either way, what's our reaction? Well, that God, with, with God as our refuge and our strength, he's ever-present, well-proved uh, to be our help uh, and our aid in all of these troubles. Um, that is really verse 1. Um, there, there's a little word in the Hebrew that isn't translated here in the electronic copy, uh, selah, which means there's an intermission there uh, between verses. And then verse 2 becomes a, a nice positive picture uh, of uh, the, the city of God, actually, the Jerusalem that is there. Uh, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Um, interesting, because the city of God in, in this day, Jerusalem, had no, had no river. Uh, it had no river running through it. Um, and, and yet you value and you understand you need a river. You need a source of water. Um, it, it was one of the defining characteristics of the Garden of Eden. Um, there was a river there that went through, broke off into four uh, directions. Two of them are the Tigris and Euphrates that we look at uh, and we can see in the Middle East now. Uh, the other two, we don't know what they are, but, but the, the idea that, that you had to have water as a source of life that is there, and that's a theme throughout Scripture too uh, that you can go back and you can look at and track. Um, it'll show up again in, in Revelation, uh, the river that is there uh, in, in, in the city of God coming down the middle uh, of the city and on both sides of it, the tree of life. So you're not, your access is not cut off from it. Um, the holy place uh, where the most high dwells. And that becomes a, you know, <laughs> that's what the city of God is. God is living there with his people. Uh, he's living there. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, at the end. God is within her. She will not fall. Uh, God will help her at break of day. Um, this is what I found interesting. You start getting into this, and, and if you look at, at the Hebrew of it, um, God is within her. She will not fall. And that word for fall is the same word that is talked about um, earlier. Um, though, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, look at what's picked up. Uh, with God within the city, the city that is on a, on a hill, the refuge, the, the, the fortress that is high, will not fall um, with God in there, uh, even if all the other mountains in the earth fall as well. Uh, God will help her uh, at break of day. Uh, nations are in uproar, and this is, this is a, a neat thing too, because this is the same word that is talked about, the water's roaring, um, nations roar, uh, so, so this tumult and these things are going on in the nations, in the, the Hebrew word is goyim, the Gentile lands, not those who are, are God's people, but every other people have these, na these people, these nations are in uproar, and the kingdoms, what do they do? They fall uh, into the sea like the mountains, like uh, all these things that go on. Uh, why? God lifts up his voice, God speaks and the earth melts. And what a beautiful picture I think that is and a reminder 
uh, of what uh, you know Jesus is going to come back and do. Uh, the, the, the world was destroyed once with water. The next time will not be water. God made the promise, no more water um, to, to destroy the earth. But that doesn't mean that the earth's not going to be destroyed. Um, it, it is going to be destroyed by fire. God's going to, going to light, Christ is going to come back, light a fuse, uh, and melt this stuff down and rebuild. Um, it, it is uh, a <coughs> nice picture and a nice thing to think of uh, through all of this, you know, as judgment is this huge thing. Yet we, not, we don't fear uh, because God is with us as a mighty fortress. Uh, this is a refrain that repeats itself a couple times. We'll just talk about it here quickly. Uh, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob uh, is our fortress. Again, the, um, the the fortress idea. It you know the, it's different. It's a different word than refuge and shelter that was talked about. Uh, but fortress is it has this idea of up, uh, of high. Um, you, you know, God. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Lord Almighty is probably worth thinking about. Um, it, it's you know you think of the Lord, but this whole Lord Almighty thing seems to be a technical name of God that uh, really emphasizes the fact that, that he controls the armies, he controls the angels, he controls the things in the sky, he controls, he, he's the Lord and the ruler uh, of all things in creation. Um, and, and that's really the thing to think of uh, in uh, this psalm or anytime you see it uh, in the Old Testament. Um, the Lord Almighty is with us. And what, what a great statement when you think of that. The Lord Almighty who controls all things, all people, all armies, all war, all everything um, is with us. And more on that uh, a little bit later. Think of the investigations again that, that were called for in verse 1. You know, an ever-present, a well-proven help in, in times of trouble. Here's the invitation, right? Come and see what the Lord has done. Uh, the desolations he's brought on the earth, uh, the, the, the appalling things. And this is, this is a good reminder, too, you know, it, sometimes uh, we look at difficult things and think that God can't be associated with them at all. Not a thing happens in this world without God allowing it, uh, without God using it for a good purpose. Um, and, well, you mean famines? You mean, yes, all of it. Um, God is the one who brings it. I think of King Cyrus. I always go back and think of that. Uh, in Isaiah, uh, the Persian king that was forecast to be the king who would be God's servant to bring his people back to Jerusalem. He was not a good man. <laughs> he was not a kind man at all. Uh, but God used him uh, in all those things to tear down Babylon and bring back uh, the, 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 the Jews to Jerusalem um, to, to get back the building of the temple and the city and, and the walls that were there. It was, it was Cyrus that, for whatever reason, God, God chose and he used. With all that he was, a warring, evil man, uh, God used him. Uh, so it's a good reminder there uh, to come and see what God has done, even the bad things. Um, even the evil things, the atrocities, the, the, the appalling things in this world, God uses them uh, for his purpose to advance his cause. Um, it's all part of being a fortress and a refuge for his people. What does he do? He makes wars cease uh, to the ends of the earth. Uh, kind of a neat word there uh, that, that uh, the wars cease. Um, I, I have this picture of... Uh, you know, a fighter at, at the end of a fight, it, it, and reveal myself as a boxing fan again, um, but after, after 12 rounds of, of your hands up and going after it, and that bell rings, what happens? The hands drop. Um, you're just exhausted, the hands drop. Um, and, and that's kind of the picture. Uh, he makes wars cease, that he relaxes it, the arms go down, uh, and are dropped to the ends of the earth. It's God who brings these things about. Um, we tend to think of, we won the war. It's God's time um, when these things end. Uh, we, there would be war never ending if not for God's intervention uh, in, in things. He breaks the bow, he shatters the spear, he burns the shields with fire. Um, good pictures of, of you know, God who brings peace uh, to this earth. And very, very cool uh, verse here. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Um, so that this idea of uh, 
you know, be still, relax, uh, quit fighting, and, and know something. And it, it, the knowledge here is it, it, an acquaintance, an experience. We've spent enough time under, you know, investigating things, and we know one thing. We know who God is. Um, we know who our refuge is. And the way he says it is really neat to it. it there's a, there's a, there's not a verb there. Something, you know, we use the word to be. Uh, I am. You are. He is. Um, that word isn't in here. Um, it, the, the word is I. We have that per pronoun that we use. Well, Hebrew does too, um, and it uses it here. I, and it, and it's really a way of being very personal. Um, I, you personally know me. I am God. Um, and, and for a believer who knows his God, well. I can be still and relax in that, um, knowing that who, who my God is, my refuge is, and, and what, what a beautiful picture. Um, and, and the whole thing, I'll be exalted among the nations, I'll be exalted in the earth. Um, the idea of he'll be raised up, you know, it, it, so you think of all these things that are, that are made, nations crumble, kingdoms rah, fall. Um, what is God gonna do amongst the people amongst the in the earth in all of creation he's going to stand at the at the high point he's always going to um, he's going to make sure that that's the case um, as he fights for his people as he is god and deliverer and refuge and fortress and shelter for his people in every trouble he is going to be there standing the highest point um, capturing attention uh, in the world and all of creation uh, that that he's not going to let that go no matter what happens uh, you know, as everything else comes crumbling down and falling down, God will stand. Um, it's a neat, neat uh, picture and a good song. Um, a couple of points, I think, that are there, and it, it closes with that refrain again. Um, I couldn't help but think about this. Verse 1 comes before verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. How many times in our life when, when troubles come and it hits the fan and we're worked up with fear and anxiety, do we start to react and say, I need something to ease my fear and my anxiety and my pain and my worry. Um, what can I have at this moment when I'm like this so that I don't have to be like this? Verse 1 comes before verse 2. God is our refuge and our strength. He's a well-proven help in trouble. Are we doing the investigation? And are we spending the time reliving the history of who God is and what he's done? So that when these times come, we don't fear. Sometimes I, I think as human beings, we invert those things. We forget to, to spend our time uh, with our God and his word, um, with each other, in his sacrament, uh, and, and just thinking and meditating on the great things he's done. And then when these times come, we don't fear and we aren't destroyed by them and, and off into the sea, uh, as it were. Um, verse 1 comes before verse 2. Just a, a pastoral encouragement. Um, you got to spend time with him. you got to spend time with him. Um, that, that's his promise. Therefore, as you do, and you learn who he is and what kind of a shelter he is, when these times come, you don't fear. I just thought this is cool, too. Um, you know... We build a house and we want it sturdy. Um, if you're in an earthquake zone, you build the footings maybe a little deeper and maybe you can't, but you build, you know, I, I remember how in California they build buildings like on rollers, uh, actually in, time, in, in places so that if they, they give a little bit, you do all this preparation so that you can take some confidence that, that the building that you are making will not fall uh, when, when the troubles come. You know, and, and uh, so you, you, as a human being, you take such great care to set yourself up so that troubles don't affect the, the security that you have and the fortress that you, 
What an awesome thing to know that our fortress makes us. Uh, our fortress, our strength, our refuge is not contingent uh, on, on our ability to build him well. Uh, he is what he is and he makes us. Yeah. It, you know, he, he created all things. He created us. He gives us the faith that, that makes us, that, that is the therefore, you know, I will not fear. He, he's the one who makes us in every way. Uh, from our from our conception all the way in uh, to our to our heaven, um, I, I think just a, again a cool way of looking at um, you know the way that we generally look at life, trying to find shelter and and uh, not having to go through difficulties and worries and pains and uh, you know good luck on your ace on that one, uh, but the shelter can build us into Himself uh, so that we need not fear. Uh, though the earth give way. This whole idea of the city of God, the temple, I want to close with this. Uh, you know, what defined Jerusalem? It's the city of God. The temple's there. What is the temple? It's where God lives with his people. Um, it's symbolic of that. There were three of them. Uh, Solomon's temple, which was the glorious, most glorious one by far. Uh, the second temple, after the people returned uh, from captivity in Babylon, Ezra. Uh, very much smaller temple, less glorious uh, than the first uh, that one uh, destroyed again, uh, and Herod uh, actually built it shortly before Jesus uh, came, arrived on the scene at uh, 30 or 40 B.C., I can't remember exactly uh, when, he, when he finished it. Uh, but, but those are the buildings that were there, all symbolic uh, of God's living with his people, uh, all symbolic of Jesus who came and stood in the temple courts and taught and said, destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it. He wasn't talking about Herod's temple. Um, everybody around him thought he was nuts because he, who uh, it took 30 years to build this temple, and you're going to you know, rebuild it in three days, and then, well, they didn't realize what he's talking about. He was talking about his body as the temple. God with us. Um, you, you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is the temple. Um, God in human flesh with us. Uh, you know, the perfect intersection uh, of God living with his people um, in, in every way, shape, and form, and, and being the refuge, being the strength. Um, one of the things that we maybe foremost should foremost go back and see and investigate again is God in ever present help and trouble uh, who. who came and lived for us and died for us and rose for us and ascended and rules for us. Uh, in the person of Jesus, we've got uh, the, the city of God itself. We've got the temple in, in you know, human flesh, uh, in reality there. Uh, and then furthermore, Paul will go on and say this in, in a letter, his first letter to the Corinthians, talking about the sexual immorality that was going on. He says, you know, all other sins you commit outside of your body, but this one's bad because your body is a temple. Of the Holy Spirit. So in, in faith, what happens? The Holy Spirit dwells in us um, through baptism. He's planted in us. And, uh, through the Word, he's, he's strengthened. He, he works to strengthen us. And um, his presence within us uh, is there. But again, God with his people, the temple uh, that is there. An individual believer becomes a temple. And then as well as that, uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians actually will expand it a little bit more. We, that is the church of God, all believers everywhere, are the temple of the living God. So that God is now um, within each individual uh, believer, but then as the collection of believers all throughout the world, God is there with them, in them, uh, the temple of God amongst, you know, living in this world, uh, in, in his people. Uh, and then finally, John in Revelation, um, in 21 you get the picture of the city, in 22 you get uh, the the picture of the river uh, that is there in, in the heavenly Jerusalem. And one of the things that John notes is, I didn't see a temple. <laughs> I didn't see a building that was there. And he says, because God was there and God is his temple. Um, and and there, there's no need for the symbolic building uh, because God is literally there. Um, with my own eyes, I will see him, Job 19, remember. I and not another. And all of, with sin removed, uh, that, that barrier between us and God, 
uh, is gone uh, and uh, you know God God himself dwelling there literally in, a, in this full beautiful perfect fellowship uh, with his people that's what what heaven will be um, we can only look at an artist's rendition of what it what it might be who knows but um, the river there in the Jeru in, in Jerusalem but you know I don't like it because there's gates and things there one of the things that John says there's no gates there's no walls there's no need for this stuff um, anymore in, in Jerusalem because there is no more thieves and robbers and wars and all these things it's just God and his people uh, with everything else gone so I um, thought I'd close with a couple of verses of Luther's uh, hymn that he, that he based this off of. I know it's uh, you know, probably a familiar thing, but uh, as you go through a week, um, you know, just, just reminders of uh, all the history that God has proved himself in. In Luther's day, for sure, he held the church together. Uh, the gospel was uh, very deeply buried uh, in the Catholic Church, and Luther, this little monk, uh, comes back and against all odds with the world and, and the church fighting against him and wanting him dead. God uh, was certainly a shelter for him uh, and uh, used him uh, to, to hit, make wars cease and uh, bring the peace of the gospel back uh, again. And, and uh, you know, God does it all the time. But the familiar words, a mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that has us now overtaken. The old evil foe now means deadly woe. Deep guile and great might are his dread arms in fight. On earth is not his equal. With might of ours cannot be done. Soon were our loss effected. But for us fights the valiant one. Whom God himself elected. You ask, who is this? Jesus Christ it is. The almighty Lord. There's no other God. He holds the field forever. Uh, blessings to you in another week uh, living uh, in, the, in the exalted and mighty fortress that is your God.